Maple Story the Novel, Season 1, Sacred Tears. Chapter 3.5 Meeting with the Queen. It took Dane and Minodora a full week to reach Arantia. Between celebrations and village inquiries, both began to see how badly the Queen's subjects were treated. There was no doubt that she was a large part of these people's suffering. Upon reaching the desert city, they were delayed by throngs of beggars skirting the edges of the market. Mothers, fathers, and children sat on the sides of the road, holding out clay bowls to passers-by. Minodora's heart ached, watching as people would either pass them by or drop only a few coins into one person's bowl and quickly walk away. Minodora? Dane asked, coming back and watching what she saw. Their darkness... it's consuming them, she said in a shocked whisper. Our mission at this moment is to speak with the Queen about her subjects. But these people need our help too! Can't we spare a few minutes to- We will, but first we must complete our task, Dane said with a stern but kind smile. I'm gonna hold you to it, Minodora scolded, reluctantly walking with him, trying to keep her mind focused despite seeing dozens of poor. Just as they were to meet the guard of the palace and request an audience, Minodora heard the pleading screams of a woman in the distance. Immediately she left Dane, running in the direction it came from. As she turned the corner, she was greeted by the sight of a young woman shielding a child from a rough-looking man. I told you that payment was due today, and that if you had no coin, it would be your brother! No, please, Jalen! I just need a bit more time, a day at most, and I will have the money! The woman shouted. Says the tail spinner! I have already granted you until sunup today, and yet you still don't have the money! Jalan threw her to the side, reaching for the boy and gripping his arm hard, dragging him along as they left. The woman got up and tried to free the boy, but Jalan struck her hard, throwing her to the ground. Someone, please, help me! The woman sobbed, but those watching the spectacle only turned away. Minodora could see darkness settling into the area, dimming the whole square as the woman continued to beg for help, her cries slowly losing their volume. She could no longer stand by. Stepping out from the building, she released a pulse of magic from her being. Her ability to use magic had blossomed and was considered to be one of the most powerful mages in Usoria. The magic kicked up dust from the roads, giving everyone within the square a hard shove. Jalan turned around as Minodora confidently walked into the square. Let the child go! She demanded, her voice echoing off the sandstone walls of the buildings around her. Silence filled the air around them. Jalan's mouth felt dry, and his strength faltered for a moment before regaining his grip on the boy's arm. And who are you that you demand things of me? What you see here is a simple business transaction taking place. Let the child go, Minodora repeated, her voice seeming to become even more commanding than it had a moment before. Listen here, little girl. Sherazad was given plenty of time to come up with the coin she owes me for making sure she and her brat brother had enough to eat after their parents died. I set her up with a good paying job to not only sustain herself, but also pay me back. It's been three months since then, and honestly, I'm growing tired of waiting. Minodora looked to the woman behind her, noticing a large but faded bruise on her wrist and defeated look on her face, as if she had given up the will to live. Jalan stepped closer to be better heard. So in place of the coin, I have decided to take her brother. He should be able to work off their debt to me in a few years, out in the sand dunes collecting lydium. Minodora snapped her attention back to Jalan. Lydium was used in many alchemical experiments in Margata. She had heard that mining and even handling the gem-like mineral was detrimental to anyone's health over time. How much does she owe you? Minodora asked sternly reaching to her waist for the money pouch hidden under a cloth flap. What does it matter to you? Is she related to you or- How much? Minodora repeated. The man seemed taken aback by this, stroking his beard as if thinking very hard, then looking Minodora over. Well, between food costs, my time in searching for a job, and other expenses incurred over three months, I'd say about 
Oh, 20,000 gold me so. <gasps> Minadora heard a shocked gasp from behind her, realizing that the price she was given must have been far and above what she was told. That is simply unacceptable. Minadora fired back, her expression becoming stern. I have come to Arantia many times over the years, and I have never heard of something so absurd. Even purchasing a house in the city only costs 9,000 silver miso. Since these siblings already have a home, only food and your time in finding her a job remains. Since you seem like the kind of person that would only spend what they need to, even the most basic food costs roughly 10 copper miso per day. Throughout three months, that total comes to 90 silver miso at the very most. As for your time, I would only offer you an additional 10 silver miso, bring the toll to a mere 100 silver miso. Minadora counted out the appropriate amount of gold coins and held it out in her hand. Take this and let the boy go, she commanded. Silence once again filled the streets for a long while, every person waiting with bated breath. Finally, the man tossed aside the boy and roughly took the money from Minadora, huffing and seething under his breath as he left. Within seconds, the woman and the boy ran to one another, hugging each other tightly. How can I ever thank you? The woman asked. Minadora grinned, kneeling down to her level and holding out another few silver miso coins. What is your name? She asked as the woman pulled away from her brother and wiped her eyes. Shirazad, you can't know how much I am in your debt. Minadora helped her to her feet as Shirazad beat the dust from her dress and sheepishly took the coins. I heard that man call you a tail spinner. What does he mean by that? Shirazad sighed, her shoulders slumping as she produced a longing smile. It was what my father used to call me. I love to tell tales, especially to children. But in trying to pay that man back, I had to put away my stories to work as an oil press maiden. No one wants to pay for tales. Minador became enthralled as Sherazad listed off a few of her favorite tales, some of which she had created. Behind her, Minadora spotted Dane leaning up against a building nearby, impressed by her initiative, but silently urging her to finish so they may complete their task. I have something to take care of, but I will return in a while. I hear some people would pay well for tales like yours. She smiled, patting Sherazad on the shoulder and returning to Dane. Do not give her false hope, Minadora. Remember, darkness born of such things is quite powerful, Dane said as they walked back to the palace entrance. It isn't false hope. In our travels, I was told about the Keeper of All Stories. He is always looking for tales to add to his collection, even if they are repeats of the same story. Minadora grinned with an almost devious smile. The guard of the palace was reluctant to grant them entrance, but after much reasoning and some pleading by Minodora, he relented and escorted them to the throne room. What greeted them was a curious sight. A hall with ten pairs of pillars and guards standing beside the main walkway led up to the throne where a woman sat, fanning herself, who seemed to have an inhuman but pleasing quality to her features. To her right reclined a man fast asleep, who Dane and Minadora assumed to be the king. To the queen's left was an enormous pile of coins, gems, and fine jewelry, which she counted with bewitched hunger. Halfway to the throne, Dane reached to Minadora's hand and slowed their walking, falling behind the guard. What's the matter? Minadora whispered. I'm not sure. Stay close. Dane whispered back, adjusting his grip on her hand, lacing her fingers with his as they neared. The guard knelt at the foot of the throne, and an audible sigh could be heard coming from the queen. What is it now, Tygoon? Did I not make it clear that I was not to be disturbed today? She said with a malicious groan. Yes, your highness, but there are two people who insisted on speaking with you personally. The guard answered nervously. The queen huffed, pulling her gaze away from the coins, facing her palm towards the guard. I will not accept your in Competence. When I command that no one disturb me, I expect that it shall be followed. She growled. Tygoon fell to his face, begging. Please, your majesty, I beg that you overlook my actions and let me have a whipping instead. Tygoon pleaded. Silence filled the room as Dane could sense tension from the other guards rising. 
Minadora clenched her free hand, a spell sizzling to life in her grip. The queen seemed to grin darkly for a moment before answering with a single word. No. She almost laughed, a spell blasting from her palm like lightning. <laughs> Thunder echoed through the room as smoke covered the guard's existence. The other guards flinched, some closing their eyes, trying not to think about their comrade having been obliterated. But as the smoke cleared, it revealed Dane and Minodora standing behind the guard, a barrier spell humming from Minodora's palm. Who are you, and how did you get into the palace? The queen screeched, slamming her feet down as she stood. We are the two people insisting on meeting with you, your highness. Dane said calmly but clearly as they bowed in greeting and the barrier lowered. The queen was about to unleash another spell when Dane's icy blue eyes looked up from under his brow. The rage that boiled just under the surface of his gaze made her hesitate, dismissing the spell and sitting down once more on the edge of her throne. I see. Then speak your mind. I have much to do. 